Hey guys, Nate Harris here with Stone River Outfitters. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to tie one of fly fishing's most widely recognized and no doubt most popularly proven producers for stream run trout worldwide, the Beadhead Prince Nymph. An exceptionally deadly subsurface favorite and arguably one that no successful trout angler's fly box should ever be without, let's go ahead and give tying the Beadhead Prince a try. We'll begin with an appropriately sized round gold bead pre-mounted afront a high quality semi-stout wire 1x or 2x long nymph hook sizes 10 through 18. What we've chosen here today is Daiichi's popular 1560 in the all-around effective size 12, fitted of course at front with an 8th inch machine gold cyclops eye bead from Wopsy. Next, to give our fly a little added weight, we'll take in hand a spool of soft round lead wire size 020, and after snipping ourselves a nice 3 to 4 inch working length, we'll then wind the wire comfortably behind our bead around the hook shank using a dozen or so well placed tight wound turns. Once wrapped, we'll next pinch away the excess lead at front, followed naturally at rear by another quick clearing pinch as well. Once cleanly removed, we'll next push our weighted underbody gently forward to, then neatly up inside, our round gold beads machined countersunk rear. Then, with our bead and lead now positioned, we'll next take hold of our bobbin, preloaded of course with a spool of Danville's versatile, pre-waxed 70 denier 6 hot Flymaster thread, color red, and we'll then start our thread neatly onto the hook shank by installing a nice, tight wound jam knot placed just behind our lead underbody's rear. Naturally once snug, we'll next rid ourselves of the excess thread with a quick careful tug. Next, to create the Prince Nymph's signature split tail, we'll select in hand and gently bend a nice long strip of rusty brown goose biots, and after snipping from the stem a handsomely pointed pair, we'll then take a moment to position the biots back to back with the tips neatly evened and their natural curled ends splayed gently outward. Then. With our tail measuring about a body's length long, we'll next pinch the pair firmly with our offhand at the fly's rear, where we'll mount the biot squarely atop and slightly straddling our hook shank using a few well-placed, notably tight-drawn turns of thread. Once firmly positioned, we'll next trim away the excess forward biot ends neatly behind our lead wraps with a quick close snip or two from our scissors. Once trimmed, we'll then bind down using a few smooth laid thread wraps any remaining exposed biot ends. Next, to create the Prince Nymph's rib, we'll grab in hand a spool of brassy sized UTC Ultra Wire, color gold, and after snipping ourselves a comfortable 3 to 4 inch working length, we'll next go ahead and affix that wire firmly to the hook shank, neatly at the fly's rear, using a series of well-placed, smooth-wound, and notably tight-drawn thread wraps. Then, to create this pattern's trademark, naturally iridescent, brown and olive, coppery gold body, we'll next grab in hand a nice bundle of strung peacock curl and we'll pull from the string four or five nice long full fluffy strands. After a quick rough evening by hand of the hurls and a neat tidy snip of the forward ends to help even up the tips a bit, we'll next mount those hurls by their fresh cut tips snugly against the hook shank and neatly at the fly's rear using a few more well placed tight wound turns of thread. Once bound, we'll next take a moment to prepare our hurls for sturdy wrapping by installing at the fly's rear a nice three or four inch long dubbing loop. And after advancing our thread quickly forward all the way to our bead to get our bobbin out of the way, we'll next gently grab that peacock neatly inside of our dubbing loop and we'll then twist the two simultaneously together, creating of course a nice, neat, notably durable, tight round rope of snug spun peacock. Once snugly spun, we'll next begin wrapping forward towards our hook eye in smooth, continuous, tight wound fashion. A nice, plump, robust body of iridescent peacock curl. 
Once forward towards our bead, we'll then tie off our hurls snugly along the hook shank's top using a few well-placed thread wraps. And naturally, once secure, we'll then trim away the excess peacock hurl neatly at its base with a quick close snip from our scissors. Next, we'll begin wrapping forward in counterwound fashion, meaning in the opposite direction of our hurl. Using moderately heavy tension and a steep angle of attack, our gold wire rib. Ensuring, of course, as we advance that we wrap using carefully controlled and evenly spaced turns. Once forward towards our bead, we'll then go ahead and tie off our rib, snugly against the hook shank, using a few tight wound thread wraps. And naturally, once firmly secured, we'll then rid ourselves of the excess wire with a quick couple of bending twists. Next, to create the Prince Nymph's collar, we'll pluck a single, appropriately sized, nice soft webby, brown dyed hen neck feather. And we'll prepare it quickly for tie-in by gently stroking the feather's barbules downward along the stem to help open up our hackle a bit and of course stripping from the base any excess fluffy residue. Then, with the feather's tips facing front and the stems naturally cup side facing down, we'll next mount the feather snugly behind our bead using a few nice tight well-placed thread wraps. Of course, to keep our hackle from pulling free while folding or wrapping, we'll take a moment to bend the feather's tip backwards along the hook shank before installing a final few nice snug locking wraps. Once secured, we'll next briefly pre-fold our hackle by drawing the squared, non-sharp edge of our scissor blade or the back edge of our hackle pliers, smoothly but firmly, a few times along both the near and far sides of the feather stem. Once folded, we'll next go ahead and begin winding immediately behind our bead, our brown hen hackle collar. Using a nice, sparse, two or three carefully controlled, snug wound, close and abutting turns, once satisfied, we'll then tie off our hackle immediately behind the bead with a few well-placed tight drawn thread wraps. And naturally, once secured, We'll then go ahead and trim away the excess feather stem cleanly at its base with a close careful snip from our scissors. Next, to prepare ourselves some working space along the hook shank's top, we'll take a moment to gently pinch, sweep, and part our brown hackle collar, creating behind our bead a nice wedge-shaped trough. Then, to create the Prince Nymph's signature split wing, we'll take in hand a nice clean strip of bright white goose biots, and we'll snip from it another handsomely pointed pair. Oriented together in V-shaped fashion with tips roughly even and the curved cupped ends facing downward, we'll next take a moment to measure our V-wing quickly along the hook shank's top so that it roughly equals the length of our body. Once satisfied, we'll then mount our wing firmly in place directly atop the hackle collar's part using a few well-placed, close-controlled, tight-wound thread wraps. And once snug, we'll then go ahead and carefully trim away the excess forward biot ends neatly in front of our collar. Once trimmed, we'll then take a moment if necessary to adjust the biot's angle with our bodkin Once happily adjusted, we'll then go ahead and build ourselves, immediately behind our bead, a nice tidy, tight wound thread collar, followed of course by a nice, neat, well placed whip finish. Once snugly whipped, we'll then go ahead and trim away our excess thread neatly at its base with a quick careful snip from our scissors. A final gentle sweep and a firm pinch of our head and collar both to help dress and align everything to our satisfaction. And once satisfied with the fly's appearance, we're at long last ready to end, like we do most, with a nice level application of clear glossy head cement 
drug neatly and evenly, with care, around our thread wrap's entirety. Well friends, there we have it, the beadhead prince nymph tight start to finish, this simple little fly pattern seductive combination of peacock curl paired with a forked brown by it tail and its signature bright white goose by it wing have, together in some, proven far more than most trout can resist. A true worldwide favorite and one that indeed deserves some space in your fly box too, I hope you'll give tying the beadhead prince nymph a try. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in today. Do please remember to visit us on the web for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs and as always, snug wraps and tight lines to all.